there's still almost a thousand Confederate monuments standing across the U.S., not including the hundreds of streets named for Confederate leaders either. And on Tuesday, President Trump posed this question to a CBS reporter asking this. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Pretty ugly stuff there, and it's only gotten worse for the president after uh, all his tweets, Rob. It has, Jackie, and he tweeted about this issue again yesterday. It kind of feels like we're still at the tip of the iceberg here, no matter where you stand on the issue. But I did look into this with our research team here at 10 News. Yes, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson both owned slaves. But does that mean we're going to take down the Washington Monument and the Jefferson Memorial in Washington, D.C.? I'm going to let you form your own opinion about that. But when we started Googling things and reading articles, the lines blurred even more. So I thought I'd share this with you. Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. is built around Robert E. Lee's private home, which still stands today. And just down the hill from that is John F. Kennedy's gravesite. Kennedy, of course, sponsoring the Civil Rights Act. And around the corner from that are the graves of almost 300 Confederate troops. If you walk not far from that, President Taft is buried there. And not far from that is the grave of Robert Todd Lincoln. That's right. The son of the man who freed the slaves is buried in a cemetery built around a home of a man who led the army to keep slavery in place. I know it's complicated to follow, but bear with me. When I got into it a little bit more, it turns out that not just two, but 12 American presidents owned slave. So add Washington and Jefferson to a list that includes James Madison, who owned 100 plus slaves. And there's a college named after him. James Monroe had 75 slaves. Andrew Jackson had 200. Half of New Orleans is named for Andrew Jackson. Martin Van Buren owned one slave. William Harrison had 11 slaves. John Tyler had 70 slaves. James Polk had 25. Zachary Taylor had more than 150. Andrew Johnson had eight slaves. And this is what I thought was really interesting. Ulysses S. Grant, he had five slaves. Not while he was president, but that's the same Ulysses S. Grant who led the Union Army in the Civil War and ultimately won the war for Abraham Lincoln. So, Courtney, honestly, I could go on and on here, but you can see how complicated this issue is. It goes way beyond monuments and statues.